If anyone can help us multitask and simplify meal prep, it's the winner of season 16 of Top Chef, Kelsey Barnard Clark. Kelsey, welcome to the Sammy Cohn Show. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to have you. We're huge Top Chef fans in our family. And I'm still impressed that you were able to not only compete, but win Top Chef less than a year after having your first child. Yes, I don't recommend that part, but it worked out, so here we are. <laughs> All is well that ends well. Well, we've got so much to talk about. I want to talk about your restaurants, your new cookbook, but you've got a great meal idea that I think could work for lunch or dinner as we transition, especially from the summer to back to school time. What is that? Yeah, so this is a brown rice bowl, and it's it's one of my favorites. We eat this a lot. We serve it at the restaurant, and it's great because it's so versatile. You can change out the proteins. You can do no protein. Um, you can kind of accommodate for whoever doesn't like something or does or has an allergy or doesn't. So it's just one of those really quick, easy, healthy options that we eat a lot at my house and also serve in the restaurant. Yeah, that easy, healthy, simple is everything we want to do, especially we have a vegetarian in our family. But we have a meat eater. I'm allergic to some fish. So help me break down what the basics are and then how can we how we can kind of accommodate all those picky eaters or different types of uh, diet restrictions in our family. Yeah, so, you know, typically it's either done, I do brown rice or quinoa. So if you are gluten free, if you have any issues like that, obviously quinoa is a great option. Brown rice I love. So Brown rice or quinoa, you just do like a scoop of that first and you add as much as you want, honestly. I usually do about a half a cup of that, roughly cooked. And then vegetables can be anything in the world your heart desires. Um, today I've got a little bit of some lettuce, some Brussels sprouts, some tomatoes, onions. You just do a, a big spoon of that as well. And did you do and then that right on the, the top? Are those roasted or were those just kind of pan sauteed? So I call these like fake roasted, so you just cook these on like high heat for just a few minutes and it's a lot quicker than roasting because it only takes like 10 minutes on a stove top like that that's awesome so it is sauteed but it still has that roast char taste to it which yeah. is really great so so yummy that's great and then what do you, what can you add on top of that so today i'm topping this with my in the book there's a recipe for whole roasted chicken i cook this all the time and there's even an option talking about how like if you cook two a week you can eat it for multiple days so I just like to top this with that chicken. You just pull it right off the bone when you're ready. And then last but not least, add a little bit of herbs, like green onion, parsley, cilantro, dill, really whatever you want. Um, I know this is super clean and easy. Basically all the seasoning here is olive oil and salt because that's really all you need yeah. and proper cooking technique. So, so and great. I eat this all the time. I would imagine you could even grab a rotisserie chicken if you wanted to save time or yes. like you said, use leftovers from dinner the night before. Do you put any like sauce or dressing? You know, kids love some, some something to kind of drizzle over it. What would you recommend? Yeah. You definitely can. I have a ton of dressings in the book, different kind of vinaigrettes that you can do different options of. Even like a little bit of sesame oil and soy sauce is mm. wonderful in there. Kind of gives a different flavor. Um, and I do that a lot. And here's actually the version I did with salmon. So same thing, looks delicious, same exact thing. You just change it up a little bit. And I usually cook the salmon in like a little bit of soy sauce, maybe some mirin. Um, yeah. And that's a delicious, different flavor, same exact ingredients, same time frame. I love it, and I love the tips you give. This is your new cookbook. Congratulations, Southern Grace, yeah. coming out this hey. week. Um, I have to confess, I loved reading it as much as I loved cooking from it. I felt like I got to kind of come on your homestead in Alabama <laughs> just a little bit. That's the goal, yes. Tell us, tell us what, what, you know, why this came about and why this is coming out now. You know, I, I learned how to cook on cookbooks. So when I was kind of coming up, I was really young when I got hooked on cooking. So when I was really young, there was no Google. You couldn't just get on your computer and look up recipes. So everything I learned was either like on Food Network or cookbooks. Um, and I just kind of told myself, like, if I ever got to a place where I could write my own, I want to make it incredibly, incredibly just versatile and easy to read and, and appeal to everyone. And that was sort of my goal here is just to really just teach people through my passion of cooking. Well, you did a great job. I mean, everything from buttermilk biscuits to baby back ribs. I'm happy to say the key lime crunch puppy chow from that Top Chef quick fire is in here. You can find Southern Grit wherever books are sold. Kelsey Barnard Clark, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. It was wonderful to be on here. Bye, Sammy. Bye.